just got to Atlanta, Georgia, here with Chris Bodie. We just finished a run of shows in Turkey and uh, just flew in from Istanbul. It's great to be back on the road again this fall. And with that in mind, we've actually got Jaden Clark who's gonna do one more uh, lesson video for you guys. Jaden Clark is one of our jazz gym trainers. If you haven't checked out the jazz gym, make sure to do that. It's a really great program for live coaching sessions every day. But today, Jaden's gonna get into some really great arpeggio exercises that I think you guys will really dig. It's important to remember that just being able to play arpeggios really effectively is gonna be one of the most important bases to being able to improvise melodically. And we have to remember the application for this stuff is actually going to be less critical than just practicing it and getting it down and getting it internalized as much as you can. The more that you practice exercises like this, the more you're gonna see that it actually starts to naturally come out in your playing. So with these exercises, just remember, get them down first and see what the effects are later. If you wanna get a download of these exercises through all 12 keys, you're welcome to do that at the Jazz Lesson Videos website. All these exercises are part of a book that we just released called the Arpeggio Handbook for Jazz Musicians. It's got all sorts of exercises through major, melodic minor, and harmonic minor, as well as exercises on common chord progressions that are gonna be really useful. So Jaden's gonna get into a bunch of those exercises today. Hope you guys learned something. Without any further ado, here's Jaden Clark. All right, guys, so let's jump straight into this arpeggio package. So the way we've structured this arpeggio package is we've started with major, we've included the harmonic and melodic minor, and we've also included the half whole and whole half diminished scales. So each different scale, or you could think of it as a key center, will start with just straight ascending arpeggios. When we ascend on a given scale, we start from the root and we move up the scale. And when we descend, we start on the seventh and then we move down the scale degrees. So we're essentially playing a diatonic arpeggio starting from each scale degree. Now doing this is super beneficial through any scale because you get the sound of each diatonic chord that is based off of that scale. So you'll hear the ascending arpeggios in the major sound like this. Now here are the ascending arpeggios in harmonic minor. And melodic minor. Here is half whole diminished. And whole half diminished. So notice the slight difference in the sound of the half whole and whole half diminished. Of course, if you can play one, generally you can play the other, but it's good to take both of these scales and the scales arpeggios through both the half whole and whole half so we get the sound of both of them separately into our ears. So we then have the descending version of the arpeggio exercise and that starts on the seventh and then moves up through the scale degrees but playing descending diatonic arpeggios and then on the way down we start on the roots. We're essentially swapping around those starting notes when we're playing descending diatonic arpeggios, but you'll find that both of them, practicing both of them simultaneously, will be incredibly useful. Here's what the descending arpeggios sound like in major. So you'll see the descending arpeggios through each of our chosen scales throughout this PDF. And what you'll also see is what I like to call crisscross patterns. That is the mixture of ascending one way, then the next diatonic arpeggio would descend. And you'd almost snake up the arpeggios that way and you'll do the same thing coming back down. So like the ascending arpeggios, when you're ascending and crisscrossing, as I like to call it, you would start on the root and then you would move up and you finish on the root. Again, when we descend, when we play this pattern descending, we start on that seventh. So it just resolves a little nicer towards the end there. Here's what the crisscross pattern sounds like in major. <laughs> 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 
Now here's the pattern in melodic minor. Now keep in mind a few tricks that you can use in order to get these arpeggios under your fingers more quickly and ideally off the page more quickly. When you go from major to say melodic minor, remember that we're only changing that third. So if you learn major first and you learn it through the keys, all you have to do is change one note throughout those diatonic arpeggios to make it into a melodic minor scale. Then, for example, you can go from melodic minor to harmonic minor. You only have to change that sixth, have to flatten the sixth for the harmonic minor. And then all of this is going to start feeling really, really familiar under our fingers. Another thing that we really focus on in this PDF is arpeggio flexibility. And that means not only starting arpeggios from different notes, and you can do this by simply reading through the ascending and descending arpeggios with each scale, but playing different orders of arpeggio notes while also starting on a different arpeggio note. So for example, we include a different pattern for each scale that starts on each arpeggio note. So we'll have one the different one that starts on the root, one different one that starts on the third, one different one that starts on the fifth, and another one that starts on the seventh, and we use these same patterns throughout each scale. So for our different pattern that we chose that starts on the root, we've chosen one, three, seven, five. You'll find that this to be quite useful through the scales. And it sounds a bit like this. <laughs> And of course, when we descend in patterns like this, we want to keep those numbers exactly the same. Uh, but at times, we may have to shift up the octaves a little bit just to make sure that it leads nicely in a descending pattern. The pattern that we chose to start from the third is 3751. And we take this ascending and descending. Now this one's a nice one because we don't really have to move the octaves around at all. We can keep it nice and steady in both ascending and descending, so there's not as much that we have to think about and process in the moment there when we are learning this one. Now for the pattern that we have starting on the fifth, we have five, three, seven, one, and it sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> Now, once again, this is one of those patterns that we don't have to shift the octaves at all for it to lead relatively nicely in descending as well. And for our final pattern that we include that starts on the seventh, we have seven, five, one, three. And this sounds a bit like this. Then on the descending, when we do this, we actually reverse the octaves. So meaning that the seven and the five actually shifts octaves. So the seven and the five are above the one and the three when we're descending, just to make it sound a little smoother. Another great way to practice arpeggios is over common chord progressions. And that's something else we include in this PDF package. When doing this, it's best that we arpeggiate up to the ninth and then back down in order to make our lines sound symmetrical and fit amongst the whole chord. Here are a few examples of the common chord progressions that we include in this PDF package. Notice how straight and legato I'm playing these. This is how I prefer to practice technique exercises first and then I add articulation later once I have everything under my fingers and once my time feel is feeling nice and even through my fingers.
Now keep in mind that it's ideal that we will have practiced all our arpeggios leading up to this point in order to then apply them over these common chord progressions. So be sure not to get too ahead of yourself when it comes to the application of these. We want the fundamentals and our technique to come first. Thanks so much for watching guys. Just a reminder, if you want to get a download for all of these exercises through all 12 keys, you can access that at the link below. And if you want to work on concepts like this daily with daily coaching, check out the Jazz Gym 7-day free trial. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. We'll see you next time.